Hello and welcome to another Top 5 exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. And I'm Ed. And today on the Top 5, we shall be talking about Top 5 Good Actors in Bad Movies. You can't hit a home run with every project. <laughs> and no. definitely with these uh, selections, that proves the point. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, did you want to start off this time? Sure. Or? Okay, my number five, I'm going to go... Um, I, I, when I made my picks, I tried to pack as many stars in a bad movie as possible. <laughs> uh, first one I'm going with is a Best Picture winner, actually. My huh. least favorite Best Picture winner of all time, The Greatest Show on Earth. Ah. Cecil B. DeMille classic that I think is overrated, bloated, and boring. And it mm. stars Jimmy Stewart as a sad clown. <laughs> Yes, I know there's people who kind of like this movie, I guess. Okay. It's the story of a, a you know, of a, a a girl who's making her way in the it, under the big top. This is back in the days of the classic Ringling Brothers circus and Jimmy Stewart's the sad world-weary clown that kind of helps the girl out. And um, there's a fire at the climactic fire at the end and very schmaltzy, very, very... I, I, this is huh. definitely Z-grade Cecil B. DeMille. So, what, there's a circus, Jimmy Stewart as a clown, and there's a big fire at the end. And I'm an actually elephant? Kind of, and an elephant. I'm actually kind of interested in this movie. All uh, right. I, 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 don't tell me... Don't blame me that I didn't warn you, because I did. <laughs> all right, all right. Sounds good. It's a snooze. <laughs> okay, let's move on to my number five. Uh, my number five actor is Raul Julia. And his performance in the great Street Fighter. Why? Oh, Raul wow. Julia, he was great in Adam's Family. That dude can do Shakespeare in his sleep. The dude was a classically trained actor. And man, he that movie, he was just a part of a movie that was just so completely he, wrong. He had to go out. It wasn't <laughs> Street Fighter's last movie? It was his last movie that was released in theaters. Oh. Yeah. And it's just Shame. sad just seeing this guy who's such a great actor in a role that just... I mean, you could put anyone in that, and it would end it. It would have ended up bad, you know. M. Bison, the the villain of Street Fighter, it's just it, it just didn't work out. That whole movie was completely silly and unnecessary. Jean Claude Van Damme as Guile, the all American hero. Okay, whatever, you know. And I don't, I don't know. Like for me, watching that movie, it's like the only reason why I watched it was because I love Street Fighter, the video game. But I can never. It's just it it hurts, you know. It's hard to put it in words how much that movie like really just fell flat and just didn't work at all and Raul Julia was just uh, it's just so disappointing to but see but at least the muscles from that. Brussels is coming back in Expendables 2 <laughs> there you go so <laughs> woo wow. that's a good choice yeah well not my number four I am going definitely going for as many good actors in a bad movie as I can get in, get into I'm going with Casino Royale. And I'm not oh. talking about Daniel Craig's Casino Royale. Oh. I'm talking about the, the classic from the 60s that uh, it was supposed to be a lighthearted farce mm -hmm. that was directed, quote unquote, by John Huston of all people. Though uh, the movie notoriously, I think, had at least two, if not three directors. It was, it, it was a troubled production. The movie makes almost no sense. Stars David Niven as James Bond, hmm. Woody Allen as another as Bond's like brother or something. Who he's running around doing slapstick. Orson Welles is in it at you know probably his fattest. Oh, uh, um, oh man, I'm blanking. There's an there's another big name that I'm. Uh, well, I th I think no, John Huston is he in it? No, he just directed it. Hmm. There's another big name I'm blanking on right now. But you had all these stars in. It's just a mess of a movie. When you said Casino Royale, I thought you said da I thought you meant Daniel Craig Casino no. Royale. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. All right. Yeah. All right. Good pick. Good pick. Um, I haven't seen it, but um, yeah, <laughs> based on bother. what you said, I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four actor is Meryl Streep, and the film is from 2009, and it's complicated. Um, ah, see, um, Meryl Streep, you know, great great actress arguably the best actor of our generation in a movie that was completely fluff and completely is just a straight rom-com and it had it wasn't funny it wasn't romantic it was just a movie that just kind of fell flat it was one of those films that i watched and i was like there is nothing about this movie that i'm enjoying and it's kind of disappointing because nancy Meyer she she made two films that i actually really liked um what women want and uh something's got to give those are really two good movies and then when i came into this one i was like 
okay, this has to be awesome because Meryl Streep is in it, Alec Baldwin, Steve Martin, and then I, just, there was no chemistry at all in the cast. It was just, it see, was I'll like a it, nothing movie. I'll take an exception to this one. You get Alec Baldwin Schween, or almost, in one scene, and yeah. you get the three of them smoking pot together. That's, I mean... Yeah, they're smoking pot. You would think that would be funny, but to me, it just, it wasn't funny. Uh, I, I don't, I don't I know. I found Steve Martin very sweet in it. Yes. Though, though it is to, to steal a, a line from Doug Benson, the whole, uh, the the fantasy of she needs to replace her beautiful home with its perfect kitchen with an even more perfect kitchen. Yeah, and even like going, like that, she's, a, she's what a chef, but yet she has like this beautiful house that costs millions and everything like that. Yeah, like what I'm kind not of saying chef it's perfect, but, but yeah, okay, <sighs> all right, okay. <laughs> well, my number three, I don't, I think this is a good solid pick. I'm going to go with the sequel, which is Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties. <laughs> now, the only reason I'm saying that is because uh, I can see at least attempting Garfield and going, okay, I'm trying to make a kid's movie right. and it failing miserably. But when, when Bill Murray came back for the second one, he was just cashing a paycheck. There's no <laughs> way. Uh -huh. And I like, I mean, I like, you know, I mean, Brecken Meyer actually is a funny, can be a funny guy. Mm-hmm. Not in this, but wow. but yeah, Bill Murray. Embar that's embarrassing. Is this the one where it's like Garfield's like lost in, in Paris? In, or something they like do that? A, a Prince and a Pauper thing where mm. it's a, it's in England, mm -hmm. and there's another. He's got a cat cousin that looks exactly like him, and they switch places. Oh man! You know, because just... he hates Mondays, and he he loves lasagna. <laughs> 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 Again, it's a, another movie that I haven't seen yet, yeah. and based off of your high recommendation, it's... I probably won't see it anytime soon. So, there's other Bill Murray movies to watch out there for yes. sure. So. Moving on to my number three. Uh, my number three actor is Mr. Tom Hanks, Mr. Oscar winner himself. And the film, surprisingly, is directed by the Coen brothers, and it is The Lady Killers. I haven't watched this one yet. Don't. You know, this movie, a uh, remake of the original classic film, this movie just holy smokes. Like, you would think the amount of pedigree that went into this film. You have Tom Hanks and you have the Coen brothers, you know, joining forces. You'd think it'd be something great. And this movie just does not work. It's just a mess. There's nothing funny at all about it. Um, you would think that, like, in the interesting thing about Coen brothers movie is that they're, they can be funny and weird and quirky. They're quirky, but it's just, it's quirky in a bad way, you know? And to me, this is probably the Coen's Brothers' worst movie, um, side by side with Hud Hudsucker's Proxy, I think. Um, I don't like that movie. I, I don't know. There's kids. really not much for me to say about this kind of film. It's just one of those things that, of all the Coen Brothers films, of all the films that Tom Hanks has made, this is the one that people should just avoid. There's nothing about this movie that, you know, is worth watching. I've so. successfully avoided it so far. Yes. Done and done. Well, on to my number two, I'm going to go with a, a, a classic Jaws ripoff from the 70s. This is a little known movie, but I discovered it on TV once. It is called Tentacles. <laughs> And it was during this craze of, I think it was probably the post-Jaws world, where everybody was like, quick, we got to get us a monster that kills people. This thing is about a giant octopus. <laughs> and it stars Henry Fonda, John Huston, and Shelley Winters. Holy smokes. Tom Joad was in a movie in the 70s about a giant octopus. <laughs> and this thing looks, this movie is so bad, it looks like a color uh, Ed Wood movie. Where there's like tentacles coming out of the ground and people are going, ah, 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 oh, ah. Wow. it is it is laughably bad. It's it's the one of those so bad it's almost good. Mm. Yeah, I remember just sitting there going, what the hell am I watching? Oh my, really? <laughs> Re wow! Holy smokes! Yeah, that's yeah. I am at a loss of words uh, yeah. right now. So let's just move on to my number two. My number two actor is uh, one of the biggest uh, movie stars out right now. It's Mr. George Clooney. Why, oh why, does Batman and Robin have to exist? Because nipples. Because you need nipples. to see bat nipples. Why, why? Okay, maybe George Clooney would make like a pretty good Bruce Wayne, right? He has that sort of charisma, but he's not a, a very good Batman, and this is not a very good Batman movie. Uh, Joel Schumacher 
man, he he kind of went for like the TV show uh, sort of feel to it, and it just d doesn't work. It's just silly and cartoonish. And, and you, you have, have the gubernator. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. I mean, of all the people you could have chosen for Mr. Freeze, you had to choose Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, I mean, Chris O'Donnell as Robin, okay. Um, and Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl? Really? I mean, this movie, you know, it's kind of funny that when you mention Batman and Robin, the first thing that pops into everyone's head is nipples. And that's nipples. pretty much all there is to say about Batman and Robin. <laughs> well, it's funny, a good transition here, because going to my number one, you picked a movie with Uma Thurman in it. Mm -hmm. My number one has Uma Thurman in it. Uh oh. And it is The Avengers. And I'm not talking about oh, yeah. the exciting Joss Whedon film, The Avengers. I'm talking about the remake of the classic uh, t television show from yeah. the 60s and 70s that starred Uma Thurman, mm -hmm. Ray Fiennes as The Avengers, John, Emma Peel and John Steed, and Sean Connery, of all people, is the villain. Now, I remember when that movie was coming out, I thought that was the best casting I'd ever heard of. I mm -hmm. was like, that, what a great idea. How those guys can be in a movie that went so off the rails I, is beyond me. The movie <laughs> makes no sense. I, I think the second half, like, I, I, I don't even remember, like, how the second half ends. It, mm. like, there, there's a giant teddy bear in it at one point. There's... It's wow. a mess. Well, and, really? I, and I know that the original show was psychedelic and, and quirky. That's fine. But mm -hmm. this thing is just... Bah. Mm. And it's not like... Again, it's not fun bad. It's just bad bad. You ever seen this one? No, I haven't seen this yeah, one. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's a stinker. Pew, mm. pew, 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 pew. And it wow. lost a ton of money. No, it's a filmmakers. Just because you have big stars and great actors in your films doesn't mean your movie's going to be good. Uh, moving on to my number one good actor in a bad movie. I will say that I'm a defender of Al Pacino in his later career. I think he has made some good stuff, especially on TV. But man, his role in last year's Jack and Jill is just indefensible. There is no reason why Al Pacino, one of the best actors we've ever seen, I'm is amazed in you this watched that movie. I'm amazed you it watched was, that. It was, to me, the worst film of last year. The, oh. Didn't the previews scare you off? The previews did scare me off, but, I mean, I watched it because I had to review it. Okay. So. <laughs> Give me that, at least. That's the last but Al Pacino, he plays himself in the movie, and he plays a role where his character falls in love and has a storyline with Jill. Jill, mind you, is played by Adam, Adam Sandler. Why do we have to see Al Pacino try to swoon Adam Sandler in this movie? It's so dumb. It's so silly. Al Pacino, you are way better than that. And oh, the last, the last, the the final scene with him, there's this music video scene with Al Pacino in it. And it Does is- Does he rap? I don't want to give away too oh, much, but raps, I'll bet. it's so, oh, it just, it hurts seeing such a legendary actor do that. Let's move on because I can't think about it anymore. I think he's lost his nut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that does it <laughs> for our top five good actors in bad movies. Um, there's a ton out there. So please, if you have any that you'd like to mention, I'll let it be known notes. at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Club Paradise. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Later.